What's up guys, it's Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're doing our first in a series of Living Tactically videos and this one's Living Tactically Connected to Wilderness Survival. And um, what we're going to talk about today is something a little bit broader than just kind of specific skills of eat this berry, don't eat this berry, you know, here's how to track an animal, those types of things. But more broadly talk about the concept of observation. And um, I'll give you a little exercise to do as we start this video. And it's a term that people would call softening your eyes or softening your vision. So when you're watching the video, you're generally looking straight at the, the computer, the television, whatever it is. And you become so focused on that that you lose your peripheral vision, if you will, out here and, you know, all the way out to, uh, you know, as far as you can see on either side, essentially. So what I want you to do now is rather than staring right at the video, you can keep watching, but become aware of things that are out in your peripheral vision. So right now, I have my hands, you know, completely spread out as far as the, my arms, as far as they can go. And I can see my fingers moving on both sides. So I'm aware of that because I've softened my vision and I can see that. Try doing that just for a minute and, you know, you can pause the video and then start it up again, whatever you want. But that is a great skill to um, become aware of what's happening in your surroundings. Now, this is certainly su true in the wilderness survival world. It's also true just in your everyday life, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a future video and about uh, Brandon Webb, a former Navy SEAL, who just talks about situational awareness on a podcast I was listening to. Really interesting. But one of the key things when it comes to uh, wilderness survival is observation and awareness. So as you walk into an environment, just to be looking around and saying, okay, what do I see? What's around? What does that tell me about this environment? What does it tell me about what's gonna be available for a survival situation? So when I come into an environment that I'm uh, in a wilderness survival situation or I'm camping even, and I'm looking around, I'm saying, okay, what do I learn about this area? Just by looking, that tells me something about the bigger picture of things. So what we're gonna do here is actually, I'll take the camera off the tripod and then walk around a little bit, show you the things I observe, and then um, just hopefully that'll give you a little insight into the key to um, good observation skills. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that as you learn to observe well, you got to know the content of what's around you. So if you look at a tree and go, oh, that's a tree, but you don't know what kind it is or how it could be helpful, well, then observation is not going to help you out very much. So you got to have both this kind of like this knowledge set and then also this like I'm learning to observe so I can take the knowledge and put it together and say, here are the things that are available to me for wilderness survival situations. So like I said, I'm going to take it off the tripod now. We'll wander around a little bit, see what we see. and. Um, I'm actually on a lunch break here. I'm just there's the woods, you know, just off the um, the church property where I work, and uh, so I'm here. You may be able to hear Route 95 way off in the distance. It's not too far away, but um, we're gonna just wander through a little area of woods here, take a look and see what we can see, listen, um, maybe even smell some stuff depending on what's around, and uh, from there learn. Okay, now that we've observed, we can see what resources we have for a wilderness survival situation. All right, let's do that. So off in the distance you can see, actually resuming here, you can see my car there and then you can see a building on the church property right there. I'm just like, you know, I'm probably what, 50 feet, 40 feet into the woods here. Now one thing I want to say immediately is um, I'm here in New England and what you see here is a stone wall. And you might see that and go, oh okay, well it's a stone wall so there probably was an old farm here or something. But um, that'll tell you something. This land, at this ground at some point was inhabited. And so this could have been a huge farm, could have been a small farm, but at least tells you human beings have been around here before. And that's something that's important to know when you're in a wilderness survival situation. Because if you see no signs of humans anywhere, you know, no in the history or currently, then that tells you something about how isolated you are. So let me take a step back here. And um, I left my camera bag on the ground. You can see it right down there. It's got the orange stripe. And um, it's hard to tell with the camera but if you look to the uh, left, actually to the right of the camera bag and straight through and then over toward, um, you know, straight ahead basically here, I'm just going to walk this direction. This is actually a deer run and you can tell it's a deer run and not a path for a couple reasons. First, it's certainly not well traveled and secondly, uh, once you get back in here a little bit, it starts to get pretty low and deer can obviously duck through. And like I said, it's probably impossible just to see it on the video, but you can see there's very clearly a, a path that's been a little bit worn through here. And it's not a human path because there's not many people hanging out back here. And there's also, there's no footprints. Um, there is, you'll find deer scat, you know, throughout the woods here, but that's just one quick observation. So, okay, you come back into the woods, you say, okay, there's a deer path. I clearly know that there's mammals in Now, like area. I said, it's probably hard to see the, um, the deer path, the deer run uh, on the camera. But let's just, just take for granted that I'm seeing it, it's really there, blah, blah, blah. 
um, take that uh, as truth and then what's the conclusions that we come from that okay so we know there's a deer path that means there's deer in the area uh, if it's really old and hasn't been used then maybe there were deer in the area in the past but now there aren't any more well it's definitely still used and so as I'm looking at it, I'm going okay there's deer in the area which means because I'm not too far from civilization there's probably hunters in the area but if there's deer in the area that probably means there's some water source not too far from here They've, they have to have some sort of water source so it may not be great for a human to go and drink out of this pond but at least we know there's some form of water around here now generally if you're going to say okay there's deer there's probably a variety of other animals now there's other hints that I see in this woods about other animals but I know from looking at this deer path and a couple other observations that there's squirrels there's birds I could hear a um, a black cap chickadee a little bit ago and I start to go okay if there's deer there's squirrels there's chickadees there's probably fox there may be coyote possum raccoon I mean you start listing all the things because of just one little observation which is there's probably deer in this area which means there's probably a lot of other animals so as you can see just picking up one fact all of a sudden expands your your um, understanding of the what's in the terrain a lot more so again I'm gonna take the uh, tripod off the stand or the camera off the uh, tripod here and we'll wander around and see what else we can see Okay, here's another observation. As you can see, I'm looking back into the woods. You can't even see my car over where it was. I'm, I walked probably 20 feet, so I'm not much farther from where we were talking a couple seconds ago. And now you can see over here that it's kind of grassy. It's a bit more open. Uh, this is what you'd call a transition area, and transition areas are great areas to spot and find wildlife. So as I go out here, I say, okay, this is a transition area. That means that there's probably going to be, you know, in the evenings, in the early mornings, there'll be deer and other things that are coming through this area. The other thing you can tell is that because the trees have been cleared, and you can see uh, there's a line of trees over there, and then really nothing over this way, as far as tall trees, this is probably, you know, some sort of farmland at some point. So, again, those observation skills, you're picking things up. Okay, I went from the woods to a transition area. I know that means, again, that affirms there's going to be wildlife in the area. And also, that again, this was a land that was probably used in the... Uh, not so distant past. I'm seeing a couple things off in the uh, distance there, so I'm going to go over and uh, take a look at them up close, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about those guys and some things we can learn. Now I'm going to talk about this uh, milkweed plant in a second, but as soon as I took two steps from where I stopped that last video, a uh, rabbit ran off into the woods. I saw him head off from where I was standing, probably was 15 feet away, and off into the woods. So again, that affirms right there. Boom, we know that there's animals around. Now this is milkweed, and uh, in this season, which is where the end of October, you start to get this, which is the, um, the down, the inner down starts to open up and um, you get these crunchy outer shells here like this. This stuff is great for starting a fire. It's basically like tinder. It feels like dryer lint um, and you can see it kind of just crushes up and it'll start floating away. Uh, so you got milkweed. Now, this is not edible. Uh, you don't want to eat this, however. You do have these long, let me just show you here, these long stalks. Those are great for doing a, uh, a, bow, a um, hand drill. So I see some milkweed, I say, okay, now I've got something for fire from the, from the, um, you know, the inner portion of it. This fluffy stuff that I dropped on the ground here, where is it, down there, All right? And then also this long stem, boom, something for starting a fire. So two things I observe right there. Now let me turn around here real quick and you can see we've got some wild rose thorns, some wild roses. These guys have thorns on them. I actually discovered them by bumping into them unfortunately. But uh, rose hips, uh, if you um, take them and put them into a tea, can actually be used for, um, they've got high vitamin C and other good vitamin content. So uh, rose hips. Now I know there's some medicinal plants here as well. Another thing I observed over here is, you can see it's seen its day, obviously, but this is Queen Anne's Lace. Uh, and Queen Anne's Lace, the root of it is wild carrot. So I know I have some uh, wild edibles here. Now, again, it's not going to be this, some huge carrot. It's going to be a small little dinky little thing, but that's where wild carrot originally comes from. So uh, important things to know, too. Now that I know the area that I'm in in the Northeast, I have to ask some questions about are there things that look like Queen Anne's Lace? but that could be poisonous. Uh, poison hemlock, for example. You gotta be careful not to mix those two things up. So unless you're totally positive on what you're identifying, don't eat some random plant because that could be really dangerous for you, obviously. So again, just walking into the woods, I'm like maybe 100 feet from my car now, we're observing lots of different things and these conclusions about one item leads me to some conclusions about the other items. 
uh, because I'm starting to be aware of my surroundings. So let's keep walking around and see what we can see. All right, let's wrap up this section. Just talk about a couple more observations. We have kind of mixed and mingled together here. Let me zoom in. Blackberry and raspberry bushes together. So that tells me two things. Obviously, in the right season during the summer, I'm going to be able to get some, uh, some good berries. They're all kind of just mushed together here, um, growing over one another. Uh, so I can get some food, some, some nu nutrition from that in the warm weather when the berries are here. But also, that's going to draw in other animals. So if I'm looking to hunt or you know acquire some other meat product from the animals, if you will, now this is a great place for them to come. I also know because of how close I am to... Um, civilization that there's probably not going to be a ton of bears so I don't have to be as concerned about that but if I was out a little bit further away I'd have to be aware that this is definitely going to attract bears as well let me show you one more thing this tree in the background here and you can see those little berry clusters on top now this is a sumac tree um, it's not poison sumac some people call it a uh, weed tree because it's it's just this humong these humongous things that grow pretty much anywhere it seems like but if you take those clusters, put them in water, and crush them up, the, the um, kind of juice, the berry that comes out of that uh, makes the water kind of like a lemonade. Now, I am very, very cautious when doing something with sumac because even though this isn't poison sumac, it is in a sumac family, so you want to be very, very careful of anything having to do with sumac. But again, some observations I'm looking and seeing here going, okay, I'm learning some more things about my environment, and there's another source of possible nutrition for me sun is coming out as you can tell here's the big takeaway I just want to uh, share with you guys is that observation is so so key when it comes to wilderness survival and kind of broadly if you want to live tactically live purposefully observation is going to be a really helpful thing today we're focusing on the idea of wilderness survival and observation but when you observe a couple things you start to make conclusions about um, some of the broader truths are facts and information about where you're at. So because I know a couple facts about this place, I can start to say, okay, now I can probably conclude even more. And that's going to be helpful for me to say, okay, I know there's deer in the area. There's probably a water source in the area. I know there's deer in the area. There's probably other animals in the area. So lots of different conclusions, lots of things we can learn. And uh, it makes the, your survival, survivability rate go shooting up because, all right, now that I know my environment a little bit, I'm going to be able to utilize these resources and do well um, in light of the resources that are here. So the challenge is obviously you got to get that knowledge into your head first to know uh, various surroundings, various environments, and then what to do with the things that you find so you can actually make them useful. That doesn't happen overnight. It's definitely a long process to learn to do that. But as you grow and learn to observe, you'll be uh, a good observer is going to be a great student. So that's what you have to keep in mind. So thanks for checking out the video. And uh, again, more stuff is coming. Keep checking back. Everyday Tactical Vids, all right? See you guys soon.